we kind of assume that we need to go above and beyond before people will order from us or prefer us above another bakery, but that, that's so not the case. Your clients will function within the boundaries that you give them. Do you offer your clients delivery? I want to stop offering delivery as it just takes up too much time. I feel you, man. Delivery sucks. Who really enjoys sitting in traffic? Honestly, for the first bunch of years, for the first four years, I delivered for my clients. And one day, I remember I drove super far and they did pay me for all of this delivery and driving super far. But I remember it took me so long because there was an accident and it ended up taking me like three hours to deliver for them or something ridiculous like that. I remember driving in the car back home and I was like, I'm never doing this again. I'm never, ever, 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 ever doing this again. And I realized that we kind of assume that we need to go above and beyond before people will order from us or prefer us above another bakery, but that, that's so not the case. Your clients will function within the boundaries that you give them. So if you tell people that you don't deliver, then they will accept that and they will make a plan. They will, and if they aren't available during that time slot when they can collect their baked goods, then they'll ask a family member to collect or a friend. Happens all the time. So don't assume that you have to deliver before people will want to order from you. It's so not true. The only um, time when you absolutely have to deliver for people is if you have wholesale clients. Then you have to deliver for them because sometimes there will be owners that they will own the restaurant or the coffee shop, but they have other jobs. This is just like a side business that they have and they don't have someone available that can drive around and collect things all day. So. If you bake for wholesale clients, you will need to deliver for them. So make sure that you choose restaurants and delis and coffee shops, etc., that are really close to your house, like within, a, I would say, a five kilometer radius. So that's like, I don't know, three mile radius, um, preferably. You can go to areas beyond that, but then make sure that all of the wholesale clients that you supply for are more or less in the same direction so that you don't have to drive in all directions all day to, de to deliver your baked goods. It's so not worth it. Okay. If you enjoy delivering, then that's great. Some people do, I suppose. But then, yes, just make sure that you really charge them. It's not just the fuel they need to cover, they need to pay for your time as well. And if you're wondering what to charge for delivery, you can just use the free baked goods pricing calculator that I've created for you. The link to get it is below this video. You just join the free resource library and then you get access to this free PDF. It calculates all the prices for you. And usually we use it for baked goods for calculating the prices for baked goods, but you can use the same one to calculate your delivery prices. Let me show you how to do that. For the sake of practicality, I'm going to do this in US dollars, but you can use this pricing calculator, whatever your currency is, okay? I'm just doing, doing an example in US dollars. Now let's start with your wage per hour. At the time I'm recording this video, the minimum wage in the USA is $7.25 per hour. But let's say your home baker has been going for about, you know, six months or eight months. So your skill has increased and therefore you are now getting $10 per hour. And now your time spent. This is the time you are going to spend driving to the destination, the delivery destination and back again. You must always charge for the time you are spending driving back home as well. So let's say you are going to spend about 60 minutes in the car. And to figure out how long it's going to take you to deliver is actually really simple. You can just go to Google Maps and you can enter your starting destination, where you're delivering to, and then they will tell you here approximately how long it's going to take. And you can also set a specific time that you will be leaving. Let's say, for example, they want you to deliver at 5 p.m. Then you are going to have to deal with peak time traffic naturally. So take all of that into account. It's going to make a huge difference in how much time you spend in the car. And then you can also add your destination going back home. So let's do that. And then you know how long the round trip is going to take. Naturally, driving back might not necessarily have as much traffic as going there. This is what you will be doing when you calculate your time spent and the distance for real. But for the sake of the simplicity of this tutorial, I'm just going to stick with 60 minutes. And ingredient costs, usually you will, you know, use your ingredient costs, but this time it comes down to your fuel costs, your gas costs. So let's say you are going to drive 15 miles and let's quickly use the calculator app here. 
if you are driving 15 miles and now you need to multiply this by the cost that your car has per mile of fuel, okay? And according to the internet at this point in time, the average is about 30 cents, okay? Oh, wait, 0.3, there we go. So then this is your fuel costs. Let's copy that, or oh, we can just say 4.5. Great, now we've got that in there. Your overhead costs will calculate automatically, so that's fine. And now we need to add a profit percentage because otherwise we're just breaking even. Then we're just covering our costs, we're just covering our time, and we're not making any profits off of this activity. However, I don't feel that it is fair to charge 30% profits for delivery because driving is a very basic skill that most adults can do. Baking, on the other hand, is something that does require a lot more skill and therefore 30% profits for your baking is fair, but I think 15% profits on deliveries is fair. So then you know that this is your delivery cost. You can round it up if you want to, to $20. And if you feel that the final delivery price is too high, remember that pricing is not about your feelings. Not about your feelings at all, it's simple math. Getting something delivered to your door without needing to set a foot outside the house, not having to go through any hassle or spend any time on it is a serious convenience and luxury. And that is worth a lot, okay? So charge people, don't be scared to charge them for delivery. They will pay because it is convenient for them. And that's how easy it is to calculate your delivery prices. And once again, you can find this calculator for free by joining the free resource library. The link is below this video.